Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Poe, and today I'm doing week 10 of my 2022 reads. This week I read a bunch of different things that were kind of a mixed bag. I had some books that I absolutely loved, and then some books that were just okay. Uh, Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. First, I finished Signal to Noise by Silvia Moreno-Garcia, which I buddy read with a Goodreads friend, Leticia, and this ended up being a book that I absolutely loved, really, really loved. So I'm going to have a review for this up later this week, uh, but this is just so much what I love of Silvia Moreno-Garcia's writing. Um, it is a story that is a historical fantasy, takes place in 1988 in Mexico City, as well as in 2009 in Mexico City. So there's a dual timeline. And we follow a woman, Meche, as she in 2009 goes back to Mexico City for her estranged father's funeral. And throughout the story, we kind of figure out what happened in Mexico City in the 80s um, that really led to her estrangement from everybody that she knew there. Uh, and there's so much in this. It's really about her and her group of outcast friends in the 80s using music to make really interesting and dark magic. Um, there's so much music in this, really complicated characters and relationships, and I just love the way that it's written. It's an excellent story, definitely one of my favorite that Silvia Moreno-Garcia has written, and I love her work in general. So I gave this five out of five stars, and again, there will be a review up later this week. Next, I finished Piccadilly Jim by P.G. Wodehouse. My husband, Sush, read this out loud to me as a bedtime story. Uh, we're working through all of the P.G. Wodehouse stories, and this was the next one on the list. Um, and this is just another one of P.G. Wodehouse's just comedy of errors. Lots of really ridiculous situations, over-the-top characters, and definitely a lot of laughs in this. So we follow Jimmy, who is a real character. He's kind of a dissolute guy, drinks too much, parties too much, causes a bunch of scandals. And one day he meets a girl that he really wants to impress, but he finds out before he introduces himself that she basically has heard of him and sort of detests who he must be, even though she's never met him in person. And he realizes that he can't really be himself if he wants to get to know her. So he takes on a fake persona so that he can get close to this girl and lots of antics ensue due to a lot of lies and a lot of fake personas and many other kind of side storylines happening with more people being kind of ridiculous and undercover and all sorts of things. So this story had a lot of really, really funny parts, although I just really did not like Jimmy. He was not a good guy and I was kind of rooting against him the entire book. So really loved all of the ridiculousness of the story but Jimmy, not so much. So I gave this three and a half out of five stars. Next, I read Undone by the Ex-Con by Talia Hibbard. So this is another of Hibbard's backlist that I'm trying to work through. This story is a contemporary romance that has some interesting tropes. It kind of has an ice princess trope and a bad boy trope. So we follow um, a, a woman who used to be a ballerina, but has had some health issues due to realizing that she has type 1 diabetes and just really needing to manage that. Um, and uh, a guy who used to be in jail, but now he's free and he has written a best-selling book and then now is incredibly wealthy. Um, but he's kind of this bad boy from the other side of the tracks. And they end up being put into close proximity with each other when their employer, who's kind of like a guy in publishing, uh, has a retreat for his authors. Um, and uh, there's a lot more detail to the plot, but basically they have this sort of enemies to lovers type of relationship. And I think that the tropes, especially in the beginning part of the book, weren't so much my style, but especially as the book went forward, I really enjoyed it. I really liked um, their interactions and their dynamic, and I especially loved the second half of the story when there's just a lot of people coming together and trying to... I don't know, work through their issues as well as uh, deal with some bad people that are in the periphery. So 
I really enjoy this. I think that Talia Hibbert's writing is always wonderful. She has very, very steamy scenes. And these characters, especially as they come together in the second half, the kind of lovers part, I think that I really, really liked. Although the enemies part at the beginning, not so much my style. Uh, I gave this four out of five stars and I'm looking forward to continuing with Hibbert's backlist. Next, I read The Awkward Thoughts of W. Kamau Bell by W. Kamau Bell. This is a memoir of a comedian that I read on audiobook. Um, and Bell is somebody who is sort of like an intersectional humor, political commentary type of comedian. Uh, Sush had listened to this audiobook a couple of years ago and said I might enjoy it because of that kind of lens through which he writes. Um, and I think that I really liked the politics in this. I really liked a lot of that lens like uh, Sush had recommended to me. Um, I also really liked reading about Bell's childhood, just the way that he grew up as somebody who was very, very nerdy. Um, it was really relatable to me. I just really liked it, hearing about his childhood. Uh, I struggled a little bit though in the second half of this book because through Belle's adulthood, um, he sometimes makes a lot of choices that felt very irresponsible to me and stressed me out. Just things like showing up to a show that he's about to give, but he hasn't finished writing his act and so he's desperately scribbling that right before going on stage. That kind of thing I found very, very stressful and I just was constantly a little bit unsure of some of the like choices he makes, even though he's clearly doing a great job, he's doing well in his career, all that sort of thing. But I found it very stressful to read about. I also thought that the writing and the humor in this were just okay. Um, I've read quite a few different comedian memoirs before and listened to quite a few on audio and generally the thing about them is they're such a joy to listen to because the writing and the humor are just so good. But here it just didn't click with me. It was, it was okay. I laughed sometimes, but a lot of the times I was just like, okay. Um, so yeah, I think that it just didn't click that well with me. And especially the way that it stressed me out in the second half, I uh, was not like super pleasant. So I think that even though I really enjoy a lot of the politics and a lot of the lens through which Bell works, um, it just didn't 100% work for me. So I gave this three out of five stars. Next, I finished And What Can We Offer You Tonight by Premi Mohammed. This is an SFF novella that is sort of a dystopian science fiction fantasy. So it is set in a future where lots of ecological changes have happened, some big disasters, flooding, all sorts of things, making Earth really, really difficult, but people are still living in cities that have kind of like canals because they're so flooded with very nasty water. Um, and we have a really unequal society where there are still some people who are incredibly rich and powerful um, and all of the rest of the people are just incredibly poor. And there's even a notion of culling the poor by saying anybody who doesn't have employment is free game for anyone to, to murder. Um, and in this world, we follow a woman and some of her friends who are courtesans. Um, and they work in a very, very beautiful beautiful house where they service customers um, and they have safety and security even while kind of everything outside of them is, is quite an insecure, quite dangerous. Except that one of her friends um, has been murdered by a client and that is quite a big issue, um, even though the people in charge don't seem to think it is. So we follow the, the courtesan and her friends as sort of the consequences of that murder unfold. And there's actually quite a lot of magic in this and religion as well as a lot of sci-fi. It is an excellent story that is beautifully written. I just loved the writing in this that also just talks so much about class distinctions and about capitalism and about the use of people's bodies and the way that people are valued. And it talks a lot about the exploitation of sex workers as well as just anybody who's poor. And it is just such really pointed political and social commentary in this very um, sci-fi and fantasy world with, with really gorgeous atmosphere, very dark and beautiful. I, I loved the writing and I loved the commentary and I loved the world building. So I thought this was just excellent and I gave it five out of five stars. 
And lastly, I read How to Be Ace by Rebecca Burgess. This is a graphic memoir about Burgess's teenagehood and young adulthood, sort of their coming of age and realization that they were ace, uh, asexual. So this memoir I thought really was so well done in terms of not just talking about their experiences, but talking about how hard it was for them to understand what their own sexuality was simply because they hadn't even heard of asexuality. They didn't know that that was, was an option. They didn't know it was a, a possibility. And so they kept thinking that something was wrong with them or that maybe they just hadn't met the right person or maybe they needed to try harder. And it was just this, this journey of self-realization for them was was so powerful I thought and also because they deal with a lot of anxiety and OCD the way that that played into making them feel even more anxious about themselves and about what they were doing in life it was really really um, powerful to kind of see that journey of self-acceptance. I also think that this is something that could be really meaningful for teenagers or you know even younger to pick up and just realize like oh I've been feeling like that. I think it could be so helpful and it has these little um, inserts where it talks about what asexuality is and how there's many different types of it, all sorts of, of variations, all sorts of different experiences. I thought that was like nice that there was these little informational inserts as well as their own story um, and I thought that the artwork itself was so good. I really liked the way that it expressed their emotions, their experiences. I loved the colors. I just thought that the whole book was really well done and just such a great uh, not just graphic memoir, but kind of informative tract on what it's like to realize that you're asexual. So I thought this was wonderful and I gave it five out of five stars. Okay, so that is everything that I read this week. If you guys have read any of these or if you're interested in them, if you have any thoughts, anything at all, just leave me a comment down below.